Hey guys, this is Henry from Ovidi again. Today I'm going to be explaining you how to apply parallel processing using Sense in Studio One. So on the previous tutorial video that I created, I explained to you how to apply parallel processing using the mix knob from your PreSonus inserts. Now we're going to show how to do that using Sense. The theory behind parallel processing using Sense, you could probably apply on any other digital audio workstation. So let's see what we have. Here's our Studio One song. I have a single audio track. It's a stereo track. It's called Loop One. I'm going to press play real quick so we can listen to it just for a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so you have the idea. Now um, we're gonna we're gonna apply parallel processing to demonstrate this, and the the parallel processor we're gonna be using it's gonna be the same bit crusher that we used on the previous tutorial. So how do we use Sense for parallel processing? Well, first we need to show our console by clicking on the mix button, bottom right corner of the window, and here's our console view. We can see here's our fader with our loop one track and here are our sends. There is, well, it says sends, there's no sends right now. If we want to add a send, we need to press on this little plus icon and we're going to create, we're going to press on add effects channel. Okay, add effects channel. We have created an FX channel called FX1. As you can see, FX1 on the send, FX1 here on the return. So what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and uh, click on the inserts of the actual FX track and look for the bit crusher from the PreSonus folder. So bit crusher, I'm going to go ahead and set auto gain. And I'm going to make something very obvious, okay? I'm going to set our bit depth to, let's say, 4. So What's happening here is that, oh, actually before that, I'm going to go ahead and make that pre-fader, okay? If I click on the send here and it goes yellow, that means that it's pre-fader. If by default it's blue, which is post-fader. I'm going to make it pre-fader. I'm going to make my bit def 4 so it's very obvious that it's, it's, um, that it's being uh, reduced my bit depth, and I'm going to set my mix all the way to 100%. That way, actually, I'm going to make it less than four. Let's do two. That way, if it's, if it's 100%, that means that all the signal coming out of this FX channel, it's going to be 100% affected by the bit crusher. While the one coming out of the loop one track, it's going to be 100% not affected. So let's go ahead and press play to see what happens. Okay, so as expected, we're listening to the original signal as well as the affected signal. Now what's happening here, just to a little bit of signal flow, the signal is going through the channel strip. It's passing through the inserts of the loop one channel strip, which I have no inserts, but it still passes through that. And then when it gets to the sends, a copy of the signal, which is a send, is being sent to the FX channel. But that signal keeps going down through the fader, so it comes out main output. So the same signal going out of the main output, it's being fed into the FX channel, which is being fed into the bit crusher, and then going out through that fader, and that output is being bit crushed, okay? So why do we make a pre-fader? Because when we make a pre-fader, the position of my original signal's fader is not going to affect the signal getting into my FX channel. So the idea here is that if I play with these two faders, the one on the left if my, is my loop one track, that's my unaffected signal, while the one on the right, it's my FX one track, which is the bit crush version, I can play with these two faders to create my own mix, and that's what we call a parallel mix. You can see these faders are parallel to each other. So I can make it very obvious and basically do a lot of parallel, a lot of affected signal versus just a little bit of clean signal. And it's going to sound very distorted. Let's give it a shot. Or 
or I could do a lot of the original signal and just a teeny bit of the distorted one. And I could gradually pull up that distorted signal in parallel and we're going to listen to the effect. And that's how you parallel process signals in Studio One using Sends. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any other questions, guys, please call us at 615-933-6775. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.